Good day, my friends. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. You can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. Contact us and let us know what you are learning so far. Today we are on day one of this week's Daily Torah series called Kare Sarah, which means the life of Sarah. Yesterday we finished the Torah portion of Vayira and discussed how Abraham exhibited his faith through his actions of obeying God without question and was rewarded for his faithfulness. This week's Torah portion opens with the death of Sarah and Abraham buying the cave of Machpelah to bury her. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. Let's pick up the story in Genesis chapter 23 beginning in verse 1. In Genesis chapter 23, verse 1, we read, Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah died in Kirjath Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. My friends, Abraham and Isaac just come back home after the Moriah mountaintop experience, to learn that even for men who follow the way of the Holy One with all their heart, there is no guarantee of tomorrow. Sometimes even for great men of emunah, of faith, there is no miraculous healing for those we love. While Abraham and Isaac were on this great Moriah adventure, Beautiful Sarah, the cherished confidant and companion of Abraham, who supported him through every transition and trial of his radical covenant life, slipped out of sight. She passed through a torn veil. The eyes of his beloved, a woman of virtue, valor, and strength, is gone. This is why, my friends, we must cherish every day we have together with our loved ones. There is no room for quarrels or missed opportunities to say I love you. Each day is a day to cherish and appreciate the company of our spouse, our children, and friends. Never allow bitterness to creep in and cause division and hurt to those you love. Continuing in verse 3 of Genesis 23, we continue. Then it says, Abraham stood up from before his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, I am a foreigner and a visitor among you. Give me property for a burial place among you, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the sons of Heth, in verse 5, answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of our burial places. None of us will withhold from you his burial place that you may bury your dead. So we see, my friends, Abraham is already seen as a mighty prince among the inhabitants of the land, especially after rescuing Lot during the battle of the kings and the blessings of Melchizedek. And if we continue in verse 7 of Genesis 23, we read, Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, If it is your wish that I bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and meet with Ephron, the son of Zohar, for me, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he has, which is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me at the full price as property for a burial place among you. Now, while Ephron said he wanted to give the cave, which is located in Hebron, to Abraham, Abraham knew better than to allow that gift to be used against him in the future. So he negotiated with him and he paid the full price of 400 shekels of silver for it. Now the city of Hebron is a spiritual battlefield. Having been there, I can attest to the darkness I felt there as the enemy seeks to wrestle control for it. Yet in its surroundings, in the hills, I found much peace there. You know, later this cave will serve as the resting place in our studies and our Torah portions ahead of us. This cave will serve as the resting place for the three great patriarchs and their wives, a place of honor 
in a memorial to those who have gone before us, living examples of great faith and commitment to God Almighty. You know, according to Jewish mystical tradition, it is also the entrance to the Garden of Eden, where Abraham or Adam and Eve were buried. The word makpalah comes from the Hebrew word kaful, meaning double. The commentators explain that the cave is actually a double cave. According to the commentator Rashi, it is one cave above another, while the commentator known as the Ibn Ezra explains that the arrangement is one cave inside another. It means an entrance cave leading to an inner cave. The sages teach that God had buried Adam in this same cave. And when Abraham chose this cave, or chose this cave, he understood that it was a divinely chosen burial site for the righteous. But Ephron was unaware of this when he sold it. The aspect of the holy site is emphasized by the name of the city surrounding it, Hebron. According to the Midrash, uh, quoted by Nachmanides, the Hebrew word for Hebron is Shephron. You know, like the gas station, Chevron, right? Is a contradiction of the word Chafer, which means friend, in the word Na'er, which means beloved. Thus, the very name of the city Hebron alludes to its most famous resident Abraham, who was the first beloved friend of the Lord, as God says in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, he says, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Though it is true that God promised the entire land of Israel to his descendants, Abraham knew that the other nations would come to refute this covenant, questioning its validity and perhaps arguing that it is no longer relevant. And that's true today, right? Everyone's claiming, you know, the, Pal the so-called Palestinians laying claim to the land. But even the nations understand that a sale is final and a transaction is binding once the gold is handed over. The sages note that even when the nations make a claim against the covenant, there are three sites in Israel that they can never claim the descendants of Abraham stole because the purchase is explicitly described in the body. It is Hebron, which is recorded in Genesis 23, verse 16. It is the city of Shechem, which is recorded in Genesis 33, 19. And, yes, my friends, the Temple Mount, recorded in 2 Samuel 24, 24. Both David and Abraham were offered the land as a gift, but they insisted on paying an exorbitant price for the land in order to ensure that their claim to these places could never be disputed. Now let's turn to our half Torah portion for today, beginning in 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, detailing the end of King David's life. In 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1, we read, Now King David was old, advanced in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not keep warm. Therefore his servants said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be sought for our lord the king, and let her stand before the king, and let her care for him, and let her lie in your bosom, that our lord the king may be warm. So they sought for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel, and found Abishag, the Shumanite woman, and brought her to the king. Remember we talked about the Shunanite woman? In our portion last week with Elisha. And in verse 4, the young woman was very lovely and she cared for the king and served him, but the king did not know her intimately. So it is all about the procedure for the transference of the torch of power in the earthly realm of the heavenly kingdom. The curtain of the half Torah will open. To find David old and stricken in years, he is weak, he is dying. 
he has to have a servant girl lie beside him just to keep him from shaking and shivering to death. The time is rapidly approaching for the man after the Holy One's own heart, after God's own heart, to transfer the reins of the kingdom. Will he willingly do so? And if so, who should his successor be? We will unravel this in the days ahead, but for today's episode, let's review our Brit Hadashah portion in the Gospel of John. Let's turn to John chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, and let's discuss the encounter of with another woman of valor, valor from Shamron, from Samaria, in the Galilee. In John chapter 4, verse 1, we read, Therefore when the Lord, speaking of Yeshua, therefore when the Lord knew that the Pharisees heard that Yeshua was making and immersing more Talmudim, more disciples than John, you know, John the Baptist, although Yeshua himself did not immerse but his Talmudim, his disciples, he left Judah and departed into the Galilee. He needed to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city in Samaria called Shechem, right? We just talked about Shechem as one of the three cities that was deeded and paid for with gold and silver um, as a deeded piece of property to Israel. Near, So he came to the city of Shechem near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. Yeshua, therefore, being tired from his journey, sat down by the well. And it was about the sixth hour. And a woman of Samaria, of Shamron, came to draw water. And Yeshua said to her, Give me a drink. For his Talmudim had gone away into the city to buy food. Now all three of these women that we're talking about here today set us the example of being virtuous women of valor wanting to serve the Lord in faith. In Ruth 3, verse 11, we see the example of Ruth, the Moabite, who lost everything and clung to her Jewish mother-in-law, Naomi, and was called a virtuous woman. Through her lineage came the Messiah. So women, my friends, who, if you are listening to this, take heart. No matter what your circumstance in life, and no matter what your past sins or misfortunes, cling to Messiah. Serve him, and in so doing, a great reward awaits you. He hears your prayers. He feels your pain in life, as he does each of us. If you're a single mother, repent. And never subject yourself to immorality or the ways of this world to get ahead. But set your heart and your energies towards serving the living God. As we're going to see in tomorrow's episode, we're going to see how the Samaritan woman clung to Messiah. And that her past sins were forgiven. And she became a virtuous woman of valor, an example for each of us. So share this message, my friends, with those you may need to hear, who may need to hear this, and pray for those who need it. God hears our prayers, and he answers those who seek him. So we'll end it here today. Meditate on the words that you've heard here today. Tomorrow we're going to dig a little deeper. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages. Help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. We have been getting so many messages from people thanking us for these words that I have been sharing with you each and every day. Remember, visit us on uh, mymdi.org. You can take one of our free classes. You can download the daily Torah schedule. You can also order our daily Torah series of books to follow along. And if the Lord so inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so that we can reach more people with these messages, so we can pay our bills. We want to give more uh, scholarships to students. We want to feed more 
uh, of the poor that that you know we're here in the Philippines, so we want to feed more of the people here that need fed. I mean, if you lived here like I do, and you see every day the people here are just basically working each and every day just to feed themselves for that day. Well, we want to be able to give them Bibles. We want to be able to give them care packages, but we need the money to do so. And being retired and being in the full-time ministry, we just don't have our personal funds to do this. So we're counting on people who hear this message that if the Lord leads you and inspires you, that you would partner with us. Each and every dollar will go to charity. It doesn't go to us because we I have my own retirement account that pays my own bills. I don't need ministry funds to pay my bills, but we want to be able to serve and to help other people. So thank you. Click on the giving menu or the donate button on our website at mymdi.org. Until tomorrow, shalom aleichem, blessings and shalom, my friends.